Alright, hello everybody. Um, something I've noticed about my YouTube channel as of late, <coughs> excuse me, is that a lot of my um, videos of, of, of obscure sort of electronics that I've made videos of, such as my access control system, which is a very good example of that, generate a lot of views. And um, I would imagine that has to do with the fact that not very many other people just sit down and make a video explaining what's going on without maybe advertising or maybe just being obscure about it. Well, not obscure, that's not the one I wanted to use. Um, just sort of vague and uh, boring. I guess there's something that I have when I make videos like that that most people don't have. I don't know. But anyways, I thought I'd add my uh, myself to that, my, add something else to that list of mine. Now, this is something that people do make a lot of videos about, although maybe I, maybe I just want to add my dish to the uh, table and um, present it my way. So, as you can see, as I pan the camera over, I do have myself a... Cisco IP phone. No doubt that everybody knows what one of these are, and the fact, and uh, well, at least I think they look very nice. You know, you go into an office and you see it's like, wow, look at that. But um, this is uh, something that I've been working on for quite a while. Whether you know it or not, I've been um, enrolled in a program here at a, um, a vocational training center in the state of Virginia, uh, and I've been learning a lot about technology and you know, uh, IT sort of technology. As a matter of fact, that is a trade I'm trying to get into. Um, and part of it is, um, uh, voice over IP, um, something I've shown a tremendous, uh, level of, um, interest in the class. As a matter of fact, we did have a setup that I did have to fix because somebody broke it and nobody else, uh, took the personal initiative to fix it. Um, so I thought it was so interesting that it, and it was actually very easy to put together. So I just thought, you know, might as well buy myself a couple things and put my own together. So here's my personal demonstration of what I have. As you can see, this is just one phone. Uh, specifically, it does say uh, test phone, so this is not one of the phones I frequently use. Ooh. Not one of the phones I frequently use. Just thought I'd grab, pull it out and plug it up, so uh, it's a, there's a demonstration piece. Um, but here's one I typically use. There's another one over by my, by my bed in, my dorm, in this dormitory that I live in. Um, as you can see, it... Uh, seems pretty legit but uh, it actually runs off of a piece of software that runs on a mainly it, it can run and it's most popular in the community of people who make this stuff for free and for personal use of a uh, software that runs on a raspberry pi i'm sure most of you know what a raspberry pi is or at least have heard of one great little module um <clears throat> the software that it runs is called asterisk um it is a sip server with um the free pbx um in addition to it, it makes it so there's a very easy to use web UI that works very well. So um, let's. Uh, I'm first going to take you over to where the Raspberry Pi is. Not not like there's any real reason to, just other than to show you. Yes, okay, so here's the Raspberry Pi right here. Basic, just two things hooked up: power and uh, Ethernet. And there's the other phone right there. So this works basically like a regular um, telephone that you'd see with, uh, you know, a Cisco phone, except maybe the um, messages and menus are a little bit different, but uh, it basically operates the same way. So you can first start by going into a uh, your me your voicemail. Password. And you can enter your password, and maybe one, two, three, four. You have yes, one it is. old message. Press one four old messages. Um, it also dials out. I do have three numbers that I use, three of which are. Well, you can control it by pressing uh, seven and then dialing the number, eight by dialing the number, and nine by dialing the number. Um, I do have it set so that uh, two is for extensions, one is for service lines, such as the date and time, or the time, such as if we go to one, one zero sixty. At the sound of the tone, the time will be exactly four fifty eight and forty seconds p.m. I know that. Uh, At the, the sound of the tone. The time will be exactly 4, 50, 9, and 0 seconds p.m. I 
as you can see, the uh, date stamp isn't uh, in the uh, at least in the American standard, but I um, I need to fix that. <laughs> I really do. Um, as you can see, it's very clear. It uh, it looks very professional. I actually uh, did uh, do some customization with different XML features. Well, different XML files, I should say, that get rid of these uh, necessary buttons, in my opinion. So the only thing that you show is a new call. And then you have uh, options to uh, redial or end the call. And the only thing that should try to change that your current options, which is something that can be changed, but it hadn't concerned me that part that much. So I guess we'll go on over and show. I'll show you the um, web UI. I'm sorry, this chair is just awful. Um, as you can see, it's very user friendly. It almost looks like a professional system. Um, I'm not going to go through it too in too deep in too much detail because, um, frankly, it's kind of boring and uh, it's I, I don't really like to uh, show my setup to the whole world. Um, as you can see, there's just plenty of stuff that you can, you have options for. Um, like up calls is a big one that I have set up, at least for me. Paging and intercoms doesn't only work for, with these Cisco phones. You have directories, everything, really cool. Um, one big thing in the way that I have the phone set up is through Google Voice. That works flawlessly, absolutely flawlessly. And uh, let's see here. You could uh, get a hold of your voicemail admin, or you can go to the user. Uh, the user page and let me make sure it's not doesn't have any sort of a uh, personal identifiable information okay it doesn't work okay well I don't have anything set up so I, I guess we're not going to be able to see that but um, with the user control panel if you have plenty of users on you can tell them okay here's your login for your specific um, extension and they can log in check their messages and stuff like that pretty cool stuff as a matter of fact and uh, generally speaking, with uh, messages and such, with the Cisco phones, it, it it seems to work quite well. Like, let's say we leave a message, the light will light up and all that. It looks very... Well, we can actually demonstrate that. I don't believe this is messaging set up. No, it doesn't. This... this um, this test phone line doesn't have a, um, a voicemail setup, but actually we can set one up for it. I'm sure that's something I'm sure somebody wants to see. Um, these are all the extensions I have programmed. Here's test phone right here. Go to voicemail, set up, and it gives you the option. And if we set up the voicemail to be the this the voicemail password to be uh, the password the the extension. It'll actually um, set it up to where. Let's do it over again. It'll actually set it up to where it come kind, of, kind of has an initial setup when you first dial in. So we go to we dial one zero nine seven. That's voicemails. Password. And if we enter uh, 2555 as a password. Welcome to Comedian Mail. First, I will guide you through a short setup process. After the tone, say your name and then press the pound key. Test phone. Thank you. Press 1 to accept this recording. Press 2 to listen to it. Press. Test phone. Press 1 to accept this recording. Your message has been saved. After the tone, say your unavailable message and then press the pound key. We all need to set that up. Press 1 to accept this recording. Your message has been saved. After the tone, say your busy message and then press the pound key. It kind of goes through this whole thing. Thank you. Press 1 to accept. Your message has been saved. Please enter your new password followed by the pound key. Please re-enter your pa Your passwords have been changed. You have no message. What we can do here Press is... Press 2 to change folders. Press 3 for advanced options. Press 0 for mailbox. Press 5 to leave a message. Press 1 to enter an extension. 
Press two to use the directory. Actually, let's use the directory. I believe it's two. Press it's welcome to the directory. Please enter the first three letters of your party's last name using your touch. A A R O N space B E S K. If this is the person you're looking for, press one now. Two zero zero one. Please leave your message after the tone. When done, hang up or press the pound key. Hello. Thank you. Press two to change folders. Press three. Now, if we go over here, you can see the light light up. The light is lit up. <laughs> Even that, I don't think is the correct uh, grammar for that. But um, it also says you have voicemail. And when you turn on the speakerphone, it kind of pulses. I don't know if you hear that. No reason why I shouldn't. Pretty much telling you need to check your voicemail. So if we go to voicemail. Password. You have one first message. Hello. Press three. Message deleted. No more messages. So that all works fine and dandy. I guess I can demonstrate the wake-up call before I go into the next segment. Um, this will use this phone right here. So the uh, number for that's 1068. Please enter the number for your wake-up call. Now that... Now this one's asking me for the extension because I have this of this phone specifically set up so it'll ask me which extension I want to use. So basically if I want to use this phone right here, we could do uh, one. Actually, that's not you it. You entered one for a wake-up call. Let's go ahead and redial that. Please enter the number for your wake-up. You entered two, zero, zero, one for a wake-up call. Press one. Please enter the time for your wake wake up call. Added at 5:07 p.m. Wednesday, June 13th for a week. So now if we go over here and we uh, wait until 5:07. We'll get a pleasant surprise. I thought that was it. I seem to have forgot that uh, it does that. And the ringtones are customizable if you have uh, ringtone stuff. Here we go. No time for that. Hello. This is your wake up call. To cancel a wake up call, press 1. To snooze for 5 minutes, press 2. To snooze, your wake up call has been canceled. Goodbye. So it all kind of works just fine and dandy. If you don't, I also want to add, uh, add that if you don't pick up the phone, it'll uh, call you two minutes later, and then two minutes later, and then two minutes later. And after five times, I think it just uh, gives up. But yeah, so that works all really actually very good. I use it every morning to get up, so that's good. Um, as I was saying about ringtones, those can be customized if we go into users, rings. As long as you have uh, ringtones, which I found very easily on the internet. The Cisco default ringtone. Some of them don't work. I think if we go to Saxophone 2, it won't work for some reason. So this ring file unavailable. Saxophone 1 for it works perfectly fine. I don't know if it's like that. Why well, I didn't want to use that as my ringtone. It sounds really stupid. I kind of like this ringtone right here. Sounds kind of groovy. So that works. Um. Now I guess we can go on to the next section of uh, the video, or at least one more thing that I do have to show you. Now let's say you wanted to set up a uh, telephone system like this with uh, the free PBX, but for some reason you have a telephone that's not IP enabled, it's just one of these good old standard phones with a regular telephone jack, and you absolutely, some part of you absolutely has to have it connected, or maybe uh, you, um, or maybe uh, you have a wireless phone system in your house and you want to use that. And uh, of course, wireless IP phones don't come cheap. Well, uh, you're, you're, you're in luck because only about 10,000 different companies have you covered. Under here, 
I'm pretty sly, aren't I? I uh, have what I use personally. Um, this is uh, something that's made by Cortelco, which is uh, kind of big in the no-name market of telephone systems. Although this one does work fairly well. So we do a made been made recently. Um, basically, what it is, and it's absolutely nothing more complicated than it looks. You take your Ethernet, you take a um, power supply, unless you have one that's powered over Ethernet, although I personally haven't seen one. Plug it in over there. Um, you, you plug your telephone in that line, and then you're on your way. Um, obviously, you have to go into the web browser and configure it when you uh, get the IP address of it, although this one was kind of difficult to configure initially, but now it works just fine. And uh, it syncs up perfectly with the SIP server. And now you can take this really kind of scummy telephone. I actually found this in one of the closets in our classroom. And uh, you can use it. Unfortunately, this isn't a speakerphone, so I really can't do much demonstrations for it. I can't hold the, this up to the... Uh, up to the... Uh, speaker, I don't know, or the microphone on the camera, which is uh, under the lens, I don't know if that may work or not, but you can, um, it dials just fine, if you want to dial that um, time thing. I don't know if you heard anything, to tell you the truth, but yeah, it works perfectly fine. The only thing is if you don't set up a dial plan on there, which is kind of difficult and kind of confusing, you just got to press the pound button, or so it will dial within a couple of seconds. So that works for, uh, all hunky-dory. It's actually kind of a cool phone because in the back it's got a um, little switch that says for local calls only. And while well, that doesn't do anything as nearly as uh, cool as it may sound, um, what it does do is that it limits you to dialing six numbers at a time. So if you're in a situation where basically you don't want people dialing locally or if you only want people dialing locally, you tell them they can't dial the, uh, the uh, area code. And uh, I guess you're kind of out of luck if you uh, go somewhere where you need to put it in and there's an, they have an IVR such as my phone system. You're kind of out of luck there. Or if you need to dial nine to go out or something like that, I don't know. But that kind of wraps up this video. Thank you very much for watching. And that'll be it.